one of us because the resurrection of our King changes everything for us. Amen? Amen. Happy Resurrection Sunday, church. Won't you look at somebody and wish them a happy Easter? Well, we are going to prepare our hearts to worship. Jesus bled, took our sufferings and died. Yesterday, what felt like his failure set in stone. This very morning, the stone is not in its place. A life emerged from that impossible grave and our God stood there victorious. Death's been beaten, enemies been crushed. I don't know what you're waiting for, but won't you celebrate the hope that Jesus brings to each one of us this morning? So happy to see you this morning, church, and happy Easter to you, the greatest day in history we are celebrating today. Amen. Amen. Won't you put your hands together, church? Here we go. The greatest day in history.
failures I tried to hide It was my doom Till I met you You called my name Freedom is all I know The old man knew yeah. Jesus, when I met you oh, You called my name And I ran out of that way Out of the darkness Into your glorious day see it. I need a rescue, my sin will help me, chains right at the weight of your glory. I need a shelter, I was an orphan, you Yo, yo. 
2021 February, a complete family tested COVID positive with mild symptoms and home quarantine by taking treatment from a family doctor. After four weeks, we all tested negative. All of a sudden, my health condition became even more worse, not knowing that I was hit by second wave of COVID. I was rushed to a multi-speciality hospital with continuous stomachache and conjunctivitis, where doctors suggested me for multiple CT scans, post which all my reports were normal, but my condition was still getting worse. The situation was not normal even after a week and my oxygen level started dropping whereas doctors were unable to find the cause and that's when I was shifted to a different hospital without any reports. I had to undergo all the tests from the beginning and it was day before Easter where my reports came as COVID positive again and the infection spread all over my stomach due to some intestinal pipe issue which also led to laparoscopic surgery. When I was shifting to a different hospital, the only voice I hear is, this is the last time you're saying this, and tears rolled out of fear. Nobody expected that I would be able to make it this far. Constant prayers from Hope Unlimited Church, pastors and leaders encouraged me, and it took three to four months for me to recover from everything. I was holding on to the word from Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22-23. The Lord's love never ends. His mercies never stop. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Last year on Easter, I was in ICU. This Easter, I'm in the church celebrating God's goodness over my life. I'm Navnita and this is my story of hope. Come on, church, I want you rise to your feet as we enter into worship.
Lord, we magnify you this morning. You deserve the honor. You deserve the glory. And we just thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. And we worship you in this moment. Church, Easter is not just today. Jesus was alive yesterday. He's alive today. And he will be alive tomorrow and forevermore. And let's just take this moment to thank him, to worship him, lean in and touch his heart this morning. And if you've never done before, if you've never lifted your hand or sung a new song to God, today is a good day. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not Desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke him into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is
Yes, God, you are our living hope. Even as we lift our hands this morning, God, we declare that you are our living hope. Because of what you did on the cross, God, we are victorious, God. And so this morning, God, because of you, we live. Because of you, we can face tomorrow. God, all fear is gone. Lord, we declare because of what Jesus did on the cross, we are victorious. And this morning, God, we're praying for jobs, oh God. Lord, people have requested for jobs. And so we look to you this morning. And God, we pray, open a door. You can open a door when every door is closed, oh God. So Father, in Jesus' name, God, we pray new opportunities, God. New doors to be open, God. We look to you, God. And Lord, we pray for healing, oh God. Lord, for what you did on the cross, oh God. 2,000 years ago, you said, by your stripes, we were healed. So this morning, as we reach out to you, God, I pray that your healing words, you will begin to flow. Your resurrection power will begin to flow and quicken our mind. to the 10 a.m. Easter service. So glad to see everybody. And all of you watching online, good to see everybody. Just before I jump into the message, I want to acknowledge all of you who might be worshiping with us for the very first time. If that's you, can I just say, uh, lift up your hand real high if you're worshiping with us for the very first time. Oh, a bunch of you. Can I ask you to stand to your feet as well? Please stand up. We'd love to put a gift bag in your hand. Yeah, let's uh, acknowledge everybody's here worshiping with us. Yeah, go ahead, stand up. Stand up if you're here for the first time. We'll get you a gift bag. In that gift bag, you'll find a book, some other goodies. We have some more people out here in front, ushers. And once you receive your bag, you sit down. But if you haven't received it, stay up. Ushers, we need another bag over here, up front. Welcome. Okay, you can have your seats. Thank you so much. And welcome. Uh, there's a uh, card in there, a welcome card. You can take that downstairs. We're out in the back. Uh, get a cup of coffee, and we'd love to uh, meet with you. Amen. 
Resurrection Sunday. Wow. It's been a great week. It's been an awesome week uh, throughout and uh, just so appreciative of the team and, and everybody who's uh, made it all uh, possible. Um, you know, obviously the, the uh, coming of our Savior and the particular this day, the, the resurrection of Jesus uh, changed everything in history, didn't it? And it changed everything forevermore. And, and three big thoughts uh, that I have this morning. One, uh, through the resurrection, Jesus uh, validated his identity, didn't he? He proved that he was who he claimed to be. Which simply also means you are everything he says you are as well. Uh, that big thought that you and I can do everything that Jesus says that you can do. Yeah. That ought to excite all of us. That's praiseworthy. That's something to begin to dwell on. That this day shifted everything concerning your and I's identity. It proved that there is life after death. Amen? This isn't the end of the story. It is not at all the end of the story. In fact, it's important for us to remember that our life here on earth is like a vapor in the air here for a bit, but then gone. And to remind ourselves how important it is to live life with the lens of eternity, to live towards things that we know are going to last forever, that we're not so busy and consumed with the daily grind of life that we never take our eyes off of the cross, off of all of what it came to accomplish. And that is not only that you and I get to live forever, but you and I can help others live forever. And that's a big part of what God has made you and I to be a witness, a testament unto him. And of course, Jesus gave us a model to just go through life, right? Just to do it as best as we know how. And in, in life, isn't easy, right, at times. Friday proved that, right? Um, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, let me read this. It says, God called you and I to endure suffering because Christ suffered for you and I. And he left you an example so that you could follow in his footsteps. And this is really key to me. You know, we wear these labels in life and wear a label around our faith, you know, whether we're Christian or, you know, these. But can I just encourage all of us to be Jesus followers? That, that's the big thing, right? To be in Christ, to be on a journey with him and make choices each day that I'm gonna be on that path of righteousness. I'm gonna be on the path that he's designed for you and me. And your path is gonna look different than mine. We're all walking different paths, which means that we ought not to criticize one another. We ought not to judge one another. We're all called to follow after Jesus, right? And of course, we recognize as just as Jesus lived. That, you know, Fridays are never easy. Those days, as, as we already uh, know, and, and uh, Pastor Rufus, he gave a great word Friday, didn't he? Uh, it is finished. Uh, if you had, didn't watch it or weren't here, go back and listen to it. It was an awesome message. But, you know, Friday was all about Jesus' pain and suffering for your and I's sake. And it was an excru excruciating kind of difficulty. I'll unpack that a little bit, but that was what Friday was represented. Saturday, yesterday, days of confusion, days when, you know, we, we are still troubled in our hearts and our minds because of events and circumstances and so forth. And, and we recognize, according to scripture, that that Saturday when the disciples, you know, went this direction and that direction, it was utterly a day of confusion. But if we're honest together, we got those days all the time, right? In, in some ways, you and I are really living these days throughout life, days of difficulty, days of pain, days of rejection, right? And then we go into a days of confusion, but thank God for Sunday, <laughs> the days of our joy, right? The day that we can enter in to our salvation and know because of him and because of his love, no matter what I'm going through, I still can find peace. Right? I can still find a rest for my soul. I still know that at the end of the story, he has got you and I in mind. Amen? Amen. We win. We've all read the book, right? At the end, we all win. <laughs> so thank God for Sunday. But the truth of it is, you know, we, we live these days throughout life. And so the big question is, what do we do in these days? What do you and I do in our days of pain? How do you and I get through days of confusion and doubt? 
And how do we continue to live in that place of joy, that place that Jesus came to, to do? Well, let's consider first that Friday, those difficult days, right? And I know that some of you are here this morning carrying stuff and finding it really difficult to enter in because of the just what's going on. Maybe you feel rejected. Maybe you feel like you've carried a weight of guilt and things. Can I just encourage you that, that at the end of this service, I'm just praying that you'll be able to lay down whatever burden you've got and that you'll rediscover the father of your salvation. Define and discover joy. But if we look at what Jesus did, right? He experienced the ultimate pain. First, physical. Beaten, wounded, tortured, kept from sleep, Whipped, 39 lashes, thorns on the head, nailed to the cross. And we go on and on on the physical things that he endured for you and I. I don't think, I think it'd be fair to say that you and I don't know anybody in human history who suffered more physically than our Savior, Jesus Christ. And just to remind ourselves that he did it for you and I. So to make that verse possible that we read at communion, that you and I can in every way be made whole. Why? Because of what Jesus endured, what he came to do. But it wasn't just physical pain. It was the mental and emotional, the humiliation. Could you imagine what it would have been like to be stripped nearly naked, paraded through the streets, the, to the rejection and the shame, the disgrace, the, the utter betrayal of even his own followers? And sometimes I know we have these feelings, feeling like we don't fit in, feeling like, you know, people don't accept us, being rejected, and the things that you and I carry emotionally within our hearts and our souls. But to remember, your Savior went through the same things. And to understand, just as you and I bear these things, your Savior did it before you. But I think we don't always think about the spiritual pain, that he took on the guilt of every one of us, that the sin of every one of us, that he felt the separation from God. As we talked about Friday, you know, where he just declared on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And for the first time being separated from the presence of his father. He's endured those things. And some of us, for whatever the reasons, driven by guilt and shame, isolate ourselves, and we tend to, to actually run from the presence of God rather than pursuing his presence. But to understand that Jesus in every way, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, he understands our weaknesses. For he faced all the same trials and temptations that you do, and yet doesn't sin. When it says trials and temptation, some of us don't realize there's multiple trials that night, not one, multiple trials. Three times in front of the Sanhedrin. He's in front of Pilate twice. He's in front of King Herod. In each one, bearing different arguments, but it, in every case, prove innocent. Amen? But the fact that he went through these trials, that he went through these sufferings, that he can identify with what you're going through, that's the point. He can understand and identifies with what each and every one of us are going through today. Hebrews 2.18, since Jesus went through suffering and temptation, he knows what it's like when you and I suffer. He knows what it's like when you and I are tempted, it says. And he's able to help us. To Jesus gives us both the pattern, but he gives us also the power. And what did Jesus do as we follow in his footsteps, as we continue to walk out life as best as we know how, looking back at what our Savior did to endure that Friday, to get through those days of pain and difficulty and suffering? Well, the first thing he did, and I love this. I love this. He called out to his friends. You and I need one another. That's what this church exists for for you to find community, for you to find deep-spirited friends who are going to journey with you in your difficult days, in your days of pain, in your days of agony, in your days when, when you're just going through stuff. And that's exactly what Jesus did. As he went over to the, his, what is called his favorite place, right? The Garden of Gethsemane. And there he is, and it's recorded here in Matthew chapter 26, verse 36. 
Jesus took his disciples with him to Gethsemane and he said, can you stay here with me? That's a powerful statement. I, you know, when, when people are going through things, I, we, and, and we've been there, right? We've, been, we've seen a, a family member suffer. We, we see others that we love that are going through stuff that we just can't explain or understand. And at times we are lost for words, are we not? I love that statement. They just stood there with him. Presence is enough sometimes. To be present to one another, one another's concern, to present to one another's pain and yeah. suffering and what they're going through. We, we sometimes don't have answers. There, there's not answers sometimes to the injustices that go on around about us. But can I encourage us to continue to show up? Right? To continue to, to lean in, even when it seems impossible, even when you think it's not going to do much good. And that's exactly what's going on over here. Jesus reaches out to his friends. He says, stay here with me while I pray. And he takes Peter, James, and John a little bit further. And he was filled with anguish and deep distress, the Bible says. And he says to them, my heart is overwhelmed and crushed with sorrow. This is the Savior who's speaking. I, I, am, I, <laughs> I feel like dying. Can you just sit here and watch with me? And he takes a few steps forward. And falls on the ground. And we know this story. We find Jesus coming back and his best friends, the three, his deep spirited friends per se, they're sleeping. They're sleeping. But I'll tell you this I'd rather have you here in church sleeping than back home watching your TV. <laughs> and Jesus would too. I'm telling you, it's enough. Uh, and maybe you get to a life group and, and you're tired, you had a hard day at work, and you get into your life group and that's all you do is sleep. But keep going. And hopefully you got friends in your sleep group that'll still support you even in the midst of your sleep, right? Amen. Yeah. And God can still speak to you in your sleep. He's big enough to do all that kind of stuff. But just presence makes a difference. And keep asking. And, and if you're a friend, keep, you know, reaching in, leaning into one another's needs. Even Jesus needed the presence of friends in his time of pain. And so do you and I. More than ever, we need it during that time. And Jesus is open. I mean, he's gut level honest about his praying. I mean, just, can you watch with me? Can you sit here? I'm crushed. I'm sorrowful. And I get it. The disciples probably didn't know. How, how do you respond to the Son of God with that? Well, we don't always have it. But again, presence is in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you fulfill the law of Christ. You fulfill what Jesus came to do. And carrying somebody's burden is as easy as just showing up in their life. And I just want to encourage you. If you've been trying to do life alone, if you've been trying to work through your problems and struggles, can I encourage you not to do that any longer, to reach out to a friend, to help them get through whatever they're doing so important. Number one, he reached out to friends, but number two, and maybe more importantly, he reached out to his father. That's exactly what he did. How did he do it? He did it, he did it just like you and I are asked to do it, to pray, to come before your father and pray. I hope we've learned that after these 40 days of prayer that we just went through, amen, that we know better, not to try to do it on our own, to reach out to friends and certainly talk to your heavenly father who knows you and loves you and wants something better and good for you. And Mark 14 records this where in verse 35, it was Jesus fell down on the ground, face down on the ground and prayed that if possible, he would not have to suffer the pain ahead of him. He prayed, daddy, father, I know you can do all things. And I don't want to have to drink this cup of suffering. But nonetheless, I want your will and not mine to be done. You know, there is such a pattern here. There is such a way that you and I can follow again in the footsteps of Jesus by simply during our times of difficulty, our bewilderment, our times of pain, to pray that what we call the Gethsemane prayer. And what is the key 
the three things that Jesus prays. Well, number one, he affirms God's power. I know you can do anything. In fact, the fact words is can do all things, it says. And that's the first thing that you and I need to do when we go to the Father in times of difficulty and pain is just to know that he can take care of it all and to trust him to take care of it all. The second thing that Jesus prays is that I, he's really expressing desire, isn't he? He says, I don't want this pain. I don't want to have to drink this cup of suffering. And boy, how important it is that you and I are just more honest and real with the Father to just express whatever is going on in our hearts, the hurt and the frustration and the anger and everything else, and to be gut-wrenching honest with the Father, to acknowledge that he's able, but to also acknowledge your own feelings is key in communication to the Father. And finally, he says, your will to be done. In other words, he offers his trust. Where have you put your trust in your difficulty? You have a heavenly father who loves you so much that he did everything possible so that you don't have to carry the pain by yourself. You don't have to go through the suffering that you're going through all alone. Reach out to friends and reach out to the father in your days of pain. But Saturday... (laughs) <laughs> it was, it's confusion. It's all kinds of full range of emotions from the religious leaders to those who are in rulers to the discipleships to the crowd. They are completely bewildered and beside themselves of what in the world is going on. I mean, the grief, the loss, the, the kind of doubt that began to enter in, the, the regret, right? You could only imagine what the disciples were thinking. They go from the upper room into this amazing moment with with Jesus of washing their feet and and sharing communion and learning this commandment a lot. They're going through all of that, right? And the next day, he's no longer there. And I'm sure in their mind, well, maybe if we didn't let Judas run and give that silver to the priest, or maybe if we would have done this, and we do this in life, don't we? We begin to replay things in our life and reimagine things, Regret, we all have it. Recrimination, you know, living in that space and not just wishing things would be different, but we look at our actions and and so forth. And, And of course, in their case, they all ran away. Peter denies Christ. And you can, again, only imagine as he goes, and we see some of this in the story of, of Peter. I just, again, I love that part when, when the, when, uh, when the ladies are in the tomb, right? And they're told, can you go tell the disciples, but especially Peter, right? God knows your name. He loves you. He's got such good things towards you. And I get it. We wish that things would have been different. We've all done stupid stuff. Amen? We've done. But he doesn't want you to live in regret. He doesn't want you to live in recrimination. He doesn't want you to be fearful or confused. I mean, and that's what was going on. And in Matthew 26, 31, it says, Then Jesus told him, Before the night's over, you're going to fall to pieces because this of what happens to me. We've all fallen apart at times. <laughs> we can relate. Matthew, or excuse me, Mark chapter 14, verse 27. All of you will desert me, Jesus told him, for the scriptures say... I'll strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. In fact, Matthew 26 says, at that point, all the disciples abandoned Jesus and ran away. Have you ever ran away from God because of your pain and your hurt, your anger? Well, we've all been there, right? But how do we get through the days of confusion? How do we get through these days when we just don't understand stuff, right? Well, can I encourage us to be children of promise, that we lean in and remember the promises of God, the 7,000 plus promises that he has towards you and to believe with all of your heart that they're yea and amen, and that they're for you. They are for you. We all have made plans and had had our plans in life interrupted and gone awry. Isn't that right? You know, I have no doubt that my kids believe that I love them. I have no doubt that they believe that I am their biological father. I have no doubt that they know me as dad. 
But I know they doubt dad's plans at times. <laughs> In fact, I know that they've heard dad's plans and say, are you crazy? Are you, you know, it, so I get it. We don't always understand God's plans. We don't understand how life, you know, we, we, we question it, we get confused, we get disillusioned. There's no question. We're just like the disciples. In John 16, this is what Jesus says. Here, here's what's going to happen. You're soon, soon I'm going to be gone and you're going to be without me. But after a while, you're going to see me again. You will weep and mourn and grieve, but your grief will eventually turn into joy. Oh, I like that. It will be like a woman going through labor pains. When her child is finally born, her anguish turns to joy because of the new life wipes out the memory of the pain. In the same way, you're going to go through some sorrow now, but I'm going to be back and you will rejoice and no one will be able to rob you of that joy. That is so important that you and I remember 2 Corinthians 1.20, for all the promises of God find their yes in Jesus Christ. Every single promise, everything we read, I get it. We've all got, we, and we're going to continue to go through stuff. We're going to have our Fridays of pain. We're going to have our Saturdays of confusion. But Jesus is saying, hang on. Continue to lean on me. Continue to trust me. Continue to believe in my promises because they are all yea and amen because of what? Because of Easter. Because of Jesus. Because he did rise from the dead to make every single one of those prophetic promises true. And true for you. True for me. That I can get through the dark times. I can get through the confusing times because... God sees and God cares and God is close and he wants, he wants the best from you. And the truth of it is when we aren't leaning into the promises of God, if we don't know what God's word says towards you and I, well, what happens? There's only one word for that, worry. <laughs> and we're worrying and we're doubting and we're, we're uncertain but we're mostly uncertain because we don't know what the Father has already said and claimed to be. You know, it's, it's, it's like the person who has to go to the hospital without insurance, right? That creates a lot of anxiety, does it not? To not understand, and, and, you know, and we know how the medical system works. They may say one thing, but it becomes another thing. That's also another thing that we kind of worry about. But, you know, when we know we have insurance and our policy covers it all, right? Well, we don't then worry so much about anything, right? Well, the trouble is you don't know what's in the policy concerning you. You don't actually know what God's already said about you in your life. And he's got such amazing promises towards you. The only thing that's going to get you through your days of doubt and confusion, it's remembering and laying hold to the promises of God. In Isaiah 61, verse 3, God's promises, and this is what he does. He promises to you and I, to all who mourn in Zion, I will give you beauty for ashes. I'll give you joy instead of mourning, and I will give you praise instead of despair. Amen? And isn't that exactly what happened from Saturday to Sunday morning? The disciples full of despair, running away, full of worry and anxiety and all of it. But thank God for a Sunday morning that turns all of that into joy, right? And that's what you and I celebrate. And that's what you and I get to lean into, all because of what Jesus came to do. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2 and 3. When you go through deep waters in great trouble, I I'm going to be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you're not going to drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, for I am the Lord your God, and I am your Savior. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for Sunday morning, a time where you and I can enter into our joy, and entering into our joy is a choice. It's a choice each and every day to be in Christ, to understand that God, that God through the person of Jesus has done everything you and I need to experience blessing, provision, rest, all the things that come with it, to rely on the power of God. That's how we get there to the days of joy and it's how we stay in it, to rely on the power of the cross, the power of Jesus Christ, the things that he's already done. He, 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 we, we choose today. And I, this is my prayer for all of us, that we choose today to reach out for God's presence. 
We reach out to one another, but primarily we reach out for his presence. We remember the promises of Jesus, every single one of them, and we rely on the power of God unto salvation. John 11, 25 and 26. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He's not pointing to something. He's not giving you, you know, some kind of set of that. He is. Do you get this? He is the resurrection. And for you and I to be in him, to be in Christ, to receive him as your Lord and Savior, and to make sure that you're making that choice every single day, to understand that there is no greater friend that you can have than him, than Jesus. There is no greater friend that will lie and, and help and get you through things. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever can believe in me, even though they die, will live again, and I will give them eternal life for believing in me, and they will never, ever perish. That is the Easter story. Our prayer as a church, our prayer as a family towards you, Ephesians 1.19, I pray that you begin to understand how incredibly great his power is. To help those who believe it is the same mighty power that raised Jesus from the dead. It is not enough to know the stuff. It is not enough to understand the stuff. God has no grandkids. He only has kids. I appreciate that we're all here on a Sunday morning. I really love the fact that you're on a journey in life group. But if you don't know Christ and him crucified, you'll never inherit the promises that he has for you. You've got to get it firsthand, not through the filter of somebody else. Discover Christ and the power of his resurrection and live in that power. That is the choice we make on Easter. That is the thing that you and I and the opportunity we have to lean in on. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, Paul speaking, and again, a prayer to I want to know Christ. Is that you today? Is that you? I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. The truth of it is, until you and I learn to die to self and live in Christ, we'll never be on the trajectory of hope that he's planned for you. To be in Christ. To make that choice, not just today, not just in a service like this, but to make that choice each and every day of our life. And how do we do that? Well, he gives us the prayer. He gives us exactly what you and I need to do. It says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, well, we're saved. Amen. Everything becomes new. We become, you and I, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. How do we become a Christ follower? It begins there, to believe with our heart, to confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, and we do this on a daily basis. We don't do this just to be saved. We do this to continue to be in him, to be a child of his. I remind myself every single day of the power of God at work in my life because of the power of the resurrection that is now at work in you and I. And that ought to bring great joy and bring about an everlasting hope and a choice that we get to make today to ensure that Jesus is and remains the Lord of our lives. And so, Father, we thank you for your word. We're so thankful for Jesus. We thank you for all of what he came to do, to bear on that cross. I mean, oh, the, the physical anguish, the emotional, the spirit. Father, we thank you for all of it, that because of Jesus, we don't need to bear that any longer. That, Father, in a moment like this, that we can surrender our hearts and our lives to you, and you will lift us. You will bring us out of that grave. You will bring us with that same resurrection power to make us alive again. And so, Father, that is my prayer for each and every one of us. We'll live in this Easter story. And Father, we just don't show up to talk about it. We want to live in it, Father. We want to live in you and towards you today. And so, Father, I pray you move by your amazing love that you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you'd invade every heart and mind, that, God, that we would make the choice to make you king, 
to make you Lord of our lives every day. We thank you. We thank you, Father, that the same power, that same resurrection power, Father, is at work in each of us. In Christ's name, amen and amen. Hey, listen, just before I close the service, I want to pray for those who have never yet made Jesus the Lord of your life. You've already heard how this gets done, to believe in our heart and to confess with your mouth. Simply pray to believe in this Easter story, but not leave it there, not just understand it, not just know about it, but to transact on it. That's why confession of the mouth is so important. That's why entering into a prayer to your heavenly Father, a prayer of surrender, a prayer that, Father, I don't want to live my life the way I've been living. I want to live my life with you, with victory and with power. And it can be done in a moment. In a moment, it can be done. For some of you, you're back in church because it's Easter, but you've been away from the Lord. Today is the day of your salvation. This is the day you rediscover your joy. So with every head bowed and every eye closed here, and you know the Lord speaking to you, to surrender your life to him, maybe for the first time or again. It is time. It is time to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And if that's you, and you want to make that choice, and you want to make that prayer, just lift up your hand right now and say, Pastor Scott, I want to join you in that prayer. I want to make that confession of faith. Just lift up your hand right now. God loves you. He has great things in store for you. Thank you. Thank you for that hand over here. Over here. Thank you. Over here. Thank you. Up in the balcony. Thank you. Thank you. Church, let's stand to our feet right now, and let's pray this prayer out loud together, knowing and believing that God will do all that he promised to do, that salvation will come and the joy that comes with that will be evident let's pray dear heavenly father i thank you for jesus and i choose him today to be the lord of my life heavenly father forgive me of my sin and jesus come into my life to live forever to be my lord and my savior in jesus name I declare I'm a child of God. Father, I thank you for all of what and who you are and now what you have made us. Father, may each of us walk in the power of that resurrection. May, you, may we be a children, a people, Father, who live in you each and every day. I pray that your angels would have charge over us, that your love would cover us, that, God, that you would continue to go before us. May we all, Father, be found on that path of righteousness day in and day out. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, listen, for all of you who prayed that prayer of salvation, or maybe you're here and you just want to talk to somebody, pray with somebody, we got a prayer room downstairs, left of the coffee shop. Love to see you down there. For all of you uh, newcomers, thanks for hanging out with us. Hope that you'll come again. We do have a welcome lounge. We'd like to meet with you uh, after the service if you got the time. Lots going on, right? Come on, I'm going to send the kids to Sunday school or VBS. Isn't that going to be fun? Don't forget what's going on. Lean into things and have a supernaturally blessed week.